Hello everyone and welcome to the 45th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering how we can use search fields to filter out the results in our NS table view. Now in the previous tutorial, lesson 44, I covered uh, how we set up this interface which is the important part and also how we can sort things in our table view which I hope you enjoyed. Uh, but the important part is that uh, this is where this interface comes from. So um, if you're wondering where how we got this set up, check out lesson 44. All right. So uh, search fields, that's the lesson for today. And what we want to do is search in our little search field for a search field. And we want to drag one out. So that's step one to actually uh, searching for stuff. Now. Uh, the important thing here, though, is that search fields, we have kind of two options. Uh, I guess we kind of always have two options for this, but basically we have two different ways of going about this. We can use bindings or we can do it the standard way of using target action. Now, I'm going to show you both ways for this because I know people often complain when I don't use uh, or I, when I use bindings and then I don't or they complain for the opposite reason that I don't use bindings. So. I'm going to save the complaints and I'm just going to do both. All right, so the first way I'm going to show you is using bindings. So that's that's that. Um, what we have set up here, of course, is this table view with the array controller. So this is a uh, NS table view bound to an array controller. And what I'm going to do is basically filter out results from this NS search field by giving the array controller some kind of predicate from the search field. So if you uh, are thinking, hmm, I've heard that word predicate somewhere, that might be because you've watched the Objective-C tutorial on NS predicate. And if you haven't, well, you better go watch it because that's what we're going to be using in this tutorial is a lot of stuff from NS predicate. Not a lot, but there's uh, enough to make you confused if you haven't watched that tutorial. So uh, go watch it. I think it's the 41st uh, Objective C tutorial, and it talks all about NS predicate, which is basically the form that we use to filter different results in Objective C. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing in this. And you might be already thinking about that tutorial. And what we did in the NS predicate tutorial was filter out different results in an array. So as you can see, that really applies to what we're doing here because we have an array controller. Obviously, controls an array, so we're filtering an array and we're just going to display on the table view whatever's left over. So we search for a term and we get those results basically and the table view shows whatever is filtered from uh, the predicate that we use. So how does this work? Well basically the search field will have some kind of predicate and we're going to bind this predicate to the array controller which basically means the array controller gets this filter predicate. How does it do that? Well, the NS array controller class has a filter predicate and set filter predicate method. So basically, uh, using this key, we can set the filter predicate on the array controller, and the array controller will, you know, do whatever it wants, and it will filter all the good stuff out. So that's what will happen there. Now, um, that yeah, that's that pretty much sums up uh, what's going on there. Uh, the only important part is really how we filter the content that we're looking for. So this is using the predicate formats, and you might remember from the NS predicate tutorial we made a predicate using predicate with format, and so here we're just designing a predicate format, and that essentially is what we're going to use to filter our results. So predicate format here with key path, all we want to do is say, hey, uh, let's look at the name values, which is the key path on the person. We're looking at the name property of every person object in our array. So we're looking at all the names. We're seeing if the name in all these objects contains some kind of value. And you might be wondering, okay, well, what's this dollar sign value thing? This dollar sign value thing is simply a variable for NS predicate. And what is the variable? Well, it's whatever we type into our search field. So if we type in cat into our search field, we're basically saying name contains cat. And essentially, we're going to filter everything that does, or we're going to find everything that contains that word cat. So um, 
you might remember from the NS predicate tutorial as well that uh, that contains is case sensitive, which means that if I typed a capital C and there was a lowercase c in my table view, I'm not going to see that thing that had a C because it's case sensitive. We want to make this case insensitive where I can type any case, uppercase or lowercase C, and I'm going to get all the uppercase and lowercase C options from the table view. So uh, basically I can say contains C and that makes it, that makes my search case insensitive. And then I can also put in a D which makes it diacritic insensitive, which means it ignores accents, so like accent on an E or something in French. All right, so now that we have this, this predicate format will essentially take the names of all the objects in our array, or all the, all the, look at all the objects and look at their names and see if it contains some value, which is whatever we search for. So you can go ahead and run this, make sure you save this document or uh, there's a good chance it won't work. Anyway, we can go ahead, type in a few things, and if we type in cat, as you can see, we get cat. If we just type in C, you can see it's already filtering and it gets a cat. We type in D, you can see it gets O, and then if I type in O, you can see we get all the things that have an O, and yeah, you get the idea. So that is working. Uh, very, very nice. It's very simple. So all we had to do for that was really just bind our predicate to the array controller and just describe the predicate format. Pretty straightforward. Now, uh, let's say I also want to have this to work for the age. Now, this is a little more difficult because the age is an int value, which uh, is probably not that practical because the issue with int values is that you can really only compare to see if the int is that value. Because I can't just type in, uh, you know, a 2 and expect to get the values of 24 to pop up because it's not the same, right? They're, they're, the, val the number value is not the same, and that's how I compare integers. So um, usually if you, uh, like for example, if I was making a contacts book or something, I would have a phone number that would be not an int, but it would be rather a string. So um, that's the easier way of working with numbers usually if you wanna search for them. But anyway, uh, we're gonna deal with an int in this case. So to do that, we can just say age, to compare ints, uh, numbers in uh, NS predicate, we use double equals like we normally do for in other places. Uh, and then we just want to compare the value, right? So uh, the only issue with this, though, is that we have our int age, and we're trying to compare it to a string called, well, whatever our value is that we type in. That's an issue, obviously, because we can't compare those two. So what we want to do is get the int value of the string that we type in. An int value is just in an NS string method. That's how we can do that. So we're just calling int value on whatever string is run or typed in. All right, so we can go ahead and run this now and make sure that this works. So add a bunch of stuff. 25, type in 25. There's my 25. Type in 40, I get my 40s. Awesome. All right, so now let's do this the non bindings way and see how this works. So uh, deselect my bind there, save, and what I want to do is I'm going to open up my assistant editor here, and we're going to set up a few things. So let's head over to our appdelegate.m, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, um, let's first off create a new variable, and this is going to be s predicate, and I'm going to call this search predicate. And I'll talk a little bit about that later, but uh, we'll leave that for now. So I'm just attacking this on to our app delegate, and this is in the app implementation section, so this means it'll be a private variable. And I should uh, do the little underscore thing just for naming convention purposes. And then uh, I will also drag uh, from my, um, my search field here into my at implementation. This will add an IB action or some kind of action that I can send whenever I type something into my search field. So what, I want, what I'm essentially doing when I type into my search field is I want to change the predicate. So I'll just call this change predicate. Alright, so we'll do that, do that, there we go. 
And one last thing that I'm going to do is I'll go over to my app delegate.h, and this probably doesn't need to be public, but whatever. I'll say property and week uh, IB outlet NS array controller array controller. All right, so uh, you might be wondering why am I adding the array controller? Well, later on when I change the predicate, I actually have to set the predicate on the array controller. So what I, I'm just doing here is getting some kind of reference to my array controller so that I can call it or set it uh, some values on it in code. All right, so now let's just go to the normal editor here. We'll flip over to app delegate.m. Now, uh, first off, we'll set up our search predicate. And what is the search predicate? Well, we basically did it when we were setting up bindings. We said that uh, when we were typing in that string in the binding section, we just said we want to compare this kind of predicate with this format, and we're going to use this variable, you know, dollar sign value, to substitute in whatever we have for uh, we typed into our search field. So that's essentially what we want to set up is that predicate. So we can just say uh, oops, ns predicate, predicate with format, and I want to set up that same predicate. So I'll say name contains cd dollar sign value, and just um, an important note is that the dollar sign in an ns predicate just represents any variable. So I can change this name if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter what I call it, and call it whatever I want, but the dollar sign is the important part. Um, that I just the dollar sign just represents that it's a variable and I can I have to change it or represent it with something and that's what we're going to do later. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to say that age equal to dollar sign value dot into value, and there we go. So this is the same predicate that we set up or the same predicate format that we had in the binding section. Now, what are we trying to do in this section? Well, the nice thing about the bindings is that uh, this automatic substitution is done for us, right? Because we type something into the search field and the search field substitutes in the value that it had into this dollar sign value and dollar sign value here. The problem is when you're using, when you're not using bindings, uh, that luxury goes away, right? Because we have to have some way of substituting in this value so that the array knows what the heck we're talking about. So that is what this change predicate method is going to do. It's going to take the string that's in the search field, and it's going to substitute in its values to the variable dollar sign value. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So we'll get an NS string, string gets, and what we want to do is ask the sender, which is our uh, search field, of course, and uh, we're going to ask it for its string value. So we get string value from whatever we typed in. Now, what we want to do is create an NS predicate. They might be wondering why are we creating another predicate? We just created one, and you would be right. But the reason we need this one is because this is going to represent the predicate with the, the variables filled in. So this represents just kind of a template predicate, which we use every time we're going to you know, use this example. So this is like the template that we use, and this is where we uh, we uh, substitute in the values that we typed in into this template. Okay, so I'll kind of recap this when we're done, but anyway, it, sh it should make sense uh, in a little bit. So uh, once I've done that, I want to just check to make sure that I haven't typed nothing into my search field. So if I've typed nothing and I hit return, I don't really want to, you know, do anything with that information. So I'm going to make sure that uh, my string is not equal to uh, a blank string, right? So uh, if it's equal to, and then I just say not. So as long as the string is not equal to a blank string, uh, means I've typed something in, then I will try this predicate out. So what do I want to do? Well, I simply want to uh, now switch the variables of whatever the string variable is into this dollar sign value. That's really what we were trying to do all along. So uh, to do that, I just say um, I create a dictionary. So NS dictionary, dictionary, 
you'll see why I do this in just a bit. There's a very useful method in the NS Dictionary class for substituting in variables, and uh, that's what we're going to do in just a second. So what I want to do is substitute in some key for some value, and you might be wondering, what the heck am I doing? Well, all I'm trying to do is the key is basically this variable name. So I'm going to take this variable name, and I want to substitute it in with this object. So I can do this by saying the key that I'm going to use is value, and the object is just the string that I got whenever I typed in. So what I want to do now is take this dictionary and say substitute in this key for the value that I have in my uh, predicate. So to do that, all I have to say is predicate gets uh, search predicate, and then I just say predicate with substitution variables. So it's a very nice little method. And I just pass in a dictionary, and what this will do is substitute in as the method would really suggest, predicate with substitution variables, I substitute in the key for the value that's associated with it. So here I have this key, this key name value, I substitute in, the I use the substitution variable, I substitute in this uh, wherever I see key value, I substitute in the value for the object. So I'm just substituting in here, I'm going to substitute in whatever I typed in, and here I'm just going to substitute in basically the integer value of whatever I typed in, right? So that is what's happening with this method. I'm simply taking this search predicate and substituting in whatever I had in this dictionary for those values. And now I get this new predicate with uh, the what I, what I actually typed in. So this is essentially what the bindings is doing. And the last step to this is to tell the array controller, yo, here are my predicates for you to filter. So I just say set filter predicate and predicate like so. And now it should be ready to go to filter out whatever it needs to. And well, we can go ahead and test it. So run this. Bindings are off and we've added a bunch of objects. Cat, Dan, 45, 25. All right, let's try a few things out. Type in cat. Beautiful, type in 25, beautiful, type in 45, awesome, 40, awesome, Bob, awesome. There you go, that's uh, basically, well, that, that pretty much sums up um, searching. I, I don't know what else to say. Those are the two different ways. There's the bindings way, which is basically a simplified way of what we just did. Uh, this is the target action way, which essentially, uh, it's not really that complicated to understand. We're essentially just getting the value from our search field whenever uh, it we type something in. We're taking that value, we're processing that with our predicate uh, template here, and then we're just, so we substitute in whatever value we typed in, and then we're just seeing if, uh, or the array controller rather, we'll see, we'll check every name to see if it contains the value that we typed in, and it'll do the same thing for the age to see if it is the same as the int value. So anyway, I hope you understood everything that was in this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. And please subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to doing another Coco series or Coco tutorial soon. Alright, I'll see you then.